again and welcome to Manch Talk. My name is Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And hi, I'm Carla Garrett. I don't know why I got, I got a little uh, confused. <laughs> our, confused our, our, our vibe and our timing is off oh, here. It's, it's your anniversary week. It isn't is it? my anniversary week. And Dan said I had to pick a specific date. And I was like, well, I don't really think I do. Um, so, so because you have two dates. So right? I do. So see, I'm not, I, I just can't. I have two do, dates too. I can't just do anything. <laughs> yeah, you probably have this, a similar. Probably. I got married at court and then and I got yeah. married so with Dan my family and, and everyone. got after. married and no, I think you might have known. 2 22, 22. Right, I got, do know. <laughs> we went up to, and there was a variety of reasons for it. We got married on February 22nd, 2022. So 2 22, um, The house clerk married us out in front of the state house. We were the only two there. That was it. Nobody, pretty much nobody knew. I think you knew. Um, and I, I remember one knew. because it's my dad's birthday and two because it had that beautiful mm -hmm. rhythm to it. And so Louie and I spent the entire morning arguing because I was like, it was last year. And he's yes. like, it was two years Isn't ago. It doesn't feel like, it a, doesn't so, feel like last year. It so that yeah. was part of the reason why we didn't tell people is because then we also got married, said our vows and everything um, on the beach in Florida. And that was on a April 7th, which is funny because up until a couple days ago, I thought it was April 5th. So, you know, like, what do I know? Only reason I noticed is I decided that every day this week, because this, Dan's like, you're so weird. I go, so this is my second first anniversary. <laughs> like, this, and I go, well, it should be a week, right? Why not? And then when I went on Google Photos, I was like, I'm confused because, you know, Sometimes the dates get screwed up and people share photos with yeah. you. And I'm like looking and then I was like, wait, I gotta go back and look. And I'm like, oh, it's the seventh. Now, uh, because it was supposed to be the fifth, but that was the, the day, day of the storm. Can. Yes. So anyways, every day I've been posting um, well, uh, reminders of our vacation. Because we had like 15 people that Carla and it Laura was did. It was a great trip. Yeah. And honestly, I mean, I just genuinely can't believe it was only a year yeah. ago. It feels... I mean, I, I know they say this is what happens, happens when we get like, old. time right, just condenses but it does. or something. And, but, and uh, I can't believe I didn't go to Florida. We didn't go anywhere south for this winter. I don't know. It just, I couldn't pick something. Like, nothing was coming together. and right. didn't, I, Nothing had the right vibe. So I already, though, a couple of people that were with us last year, not that it matters to the, you at home, um, are like, so are we going to do that again? And I was like, oh, oh I could do oh, that. Oh, we could so, do a little. Like, you know, every like, other, like, Dan goes, I go, how about every other year? Dan's like, maybe once every five years. So we'll see. Yeah. We might put some feelers out. See who's oh. interested. See who's interested in who, who. The problem is when you have friends, everybody does the same right. budget. Yeah. But that's no, okay. No, that's true. So I do want to say a few yes. things before yes, I forget. Yes, before we start. Or, yeah. So uh, first of all, there is a um, St. Anselm actually is going to be doing the NBC documentary oh, nice. on uh, the Live Free or Die pursuit of new hampshire nbc story yeah. um i think they're going to show all the episodes and then they're actually having the nbc crew come in so shira and dan oh, farrigan and uh allison king and that's april 19th and people can go to uh my twitter or my wool i'll put it on my website too i don't remember the url off the top of my head it's free it's at the politics yeah. center, so you know there'll be a lot of room, yeah. and I think it'd be really cool if I mean, a bunch that, yeah. of people come out. That's so uh, oh. definitely go get your free tickets for that. Okay. I'll try to if I think of it, I'll try to see if I can find a link for it, and I'll post it on the Manch Talk page on Facebook. That'd be great. <laughs> um, you, what else you got that before oh. I start yapping? No, start yapping on okay. the, the budget. I mean, there's just there's so much coming up. Well, that there's I'm like, a, like yeah. wow. So tomorrow, <laughs> Thursday, the whatever sixth, um, the House will vote on the state budget. Now, keep in mind, mm. the Senate has their version of the budget. The House, I, I believe, the Senate has their version of. I feel like I no longer know, or maybe not. Did, the did, budget did. generates. The, the budget starts in the House, and then if the House passes it, the Senate can choose to pass it. The Senate can say no, and then you have to have a committee of conference. Friends. But it's not like the Senate has That's its own budget. Right. You know what I mean? Um, there's two parts to the budget that, it, it, well, there's more than two, but there's two primary parts. There's HB1, which is the dollars, which everybody tends to focus on, but it's actually HB2, which is the trailer. 
and in, it's all the things that have to happen in order for the m numbers so, to so work. The, uh, you know for folks back home who aren't really political this is how i think about it this is how much it's going to cost and this is who you're buying off so like it's well, kind of no because it, it shifts is. a lot of things like I, but there's some things in the budget that when i was looking this morning i'm like i don't understand why that had to be in the budget why wasn't that just a standalone bill like there was some well because they're no, doing no, non-germane things well, on the budget which is the number one way to get everyone to well, mess up everything. anything that's in the budget to the from my recollection of being in the house anything that's in the hb2 has to be related to hb1 so they have to be related to funding they have to be tied to you can't just put like we're going to change the speed limit on the highway in the budget because there's no Didn't they pass like bans on things last year which were now you know um, free staters are getting blamed I don't of course, know. for everything right but, but um but i like i found this one little thing that i was like okay what's that it said something about um easy pass and the toll just like basically the toll discount and i was like just curious like so what's that mean and it said well 10 percent for commercial vehicles and uh 30 percent for passenger vehicles and i'm like okay what was it and i go into the rsas and it's 10 percent and 30 percent and i'm like okay i don't just so then i went back well it basically changed the language to say funded accounts so making meaning you actually have money in your easy pass account and actually with a functional transponder so basically if you just go through the easy pain pass aisle without those things you don't get the discount but i thought i don't understand why that's in the budget so we have this massive uh, the budget is 200 pages long the budget is increasing by almost a eight billion dollars it, I, I, I and I, it was like 18 percent um i did look it's at this. not good folks and i don't know what's going on there i know people are frustrated up at the state house the majorities are very slim yeah. it seems like you know the the rhinos are kind of voting with the dems that's hurting a lot of things but I have been what, here 15 years. Mm. For the most part, when Republicans have had the House and the Senate, we have seen budget cuts. We have right. seen, um, uh, you know, tax cuts. We've yeah. seen those kinds of things. So for an 18% budget increase, I mean, so I don't know is, what we're up well, to. Well, but the, the, I was reading the Josiah Bartlett thing this morning too because I'm trying to wrap my head around all because these things. Because I thought he, I read that too, and I was like, oh, oh. he's being very polite while well, kind of saying what's up. The, the, the big line was the because they're talking about all these different things like the but the big story is that lawmakers and the government and the governor have incorporated at least 850 million dollars in new revenues into the budget which is okay except for then they spent it so basically what that means is all the all the revenues that come from car registry you know, all the different things that come from all the different fees and interest dividends and business profit tax and all these different things grew so but then we're spending it so i mean well both we're spending it but i i thought what he was the subtext i took away there and honestly i read it super fast was that they are those funds used to go the surplus used to go into this rainy day fund mm. and it sounds to me like they're taking the rainy day fund and putting it, it in in the real budget and spending it. that could be now I, that may or may not if that's what's happening i, I mean to it's some extent to... i don't understand why we have the rainy day fund i would like to see the money either go back well, to the taxpayers i think the rainy day money. fund would be for or well, let's just for yeah, rainy day right when, when they there do is something super dumb or if, like, <laughs> if we had say i mean we don't knock on wood we don't have natural a lot of natural disasters in new hampshire but you know if there was massive flooding throughout the state or something or there was a we had a winter where we're like california where we had you know 30 feet of snow the money to sustain those things has to come from somewhere so that would be the rainy day fund right? i thought it comes from the magical right. federal government well, that too. just bestows money um, on us you had to see the headlines today the uh the european bank uh, yes. i mean you, uh, they're so, switching to the so they're claiming they're like oh our money printing had nothing to do with inflation you right. know and i was like you know and you start seeing those headlines where they're just directly countering what people know to be factually true including uh, i was talking to tammy before the show i just saw a horrendous like a really offensive and egregious uh uh political uh fact check it was on lily tang williams who is a chinese american she grew up yeah. under mao she ran for office she did a good showing she ran for senate congression uh federal cd2, CD2 awesome amazing lady who has a lot of stories to talk about you yeah. know 
communism, cultural revolution, yeah. Mao, what happens when we lose free speech and all of that. And she shared a meme that was a photo of the shoes that you've seen from the Holocaust, where mm -hmm. it's the shoes of the Jewish people who were murdered in camps by their government. And, um, and it says something about the shoes and that gun control is a, a, a contributing factor to these kinds of mass murders, mass killings by the state. And the, the fact check on it was like, this is says true. literally um, there is no correlation between gun control and the Holocaust. And I'm like, excuse me. Right. So That's that is a just a direct blatant censorship BS lie. And I can't believe they're getting <laughs> away with it. it it's um, really insulting. Stay, okay. Stay couple thi a couple <laughs> things. I mean, these are not, I'm not saying I'm, these are good or bad things. These are just some takeaways. There's $99.6 million in pay raises, which sounds crazy, but the problem with the state government is the the salary, they, they're like over a, many years where a normal inflation was 20%, their raises have only been like 5%. So can I also, yeah. because I did read that number and I was like, oh, isn't it interesting when they want to give raises to government employees, mm -hmm. suddenly we see the true I inflation know, rate at 20%. But when we're arguing with people about money printing and then where it, yeah, inflation comes from, it, right. they're like, oh, it's only 6%. Right. And I'm like, well, pick a lane, because you right. can't like lie all right. the time because we can tell. Right. So that was interesting. And I mean, at first, you know, at first that would probably make me go, oh, but then when I started looking at some of the specific, yeah, I actually like, read that. So, and we have a lot of like shortages, shortages, it's like in the correct, you know, I mean, we can argue about whether we think the jails are too big or too many people are arrested, but if the people are in jail, there's gotta be a, you know, you gotta have people working. You gotta have people plowing the highways, you know, there's things. Well, you know, government, there's an app for that. If yep. we actually got the regulations out of the way, then enterprising young people who want to build a business and want to do something cool yep. could come and do that, not the on the incarceration so that side. Was, <laughs> I'm like, okay, so, um, <laughs> um, so there's a front page article about Medicaid expansion because the Senate um, voted unanimously to expand Medicaid expansion mm, permanently. If only we had um, better senators. So uh, we, um, and I said unanimously, so I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. Well, I know um, Keith Murphy voted for so it. So there must have been something. about that. So um, without knowing what else was in the bill, I'm, I agree with you. I'm like, what? So one thing that is in tomorrow's um, HB2 is a sunset date for Medicaid expansion, and I believe it's 2025, but don't quote me on that. So that's a, one of these things that like people are, I have friends who are state reps and they're like, ah, I don't really like it, but I know I gotta do some things and I only way we're gonna get this is we're gonna, so I know that game, I've been there, it's not an easy <laughs> thing. Um, the one of the things that Which I- Which is why it's better not to have the horse trading in the budget, because the horse trading in the budget is how you get more malfeasance. Yeah. Um, and I guess I thought about it. I'm like, why don't we, I, I've always had a thought. So you have a two year uh, election, two year cycle when you serve. I used to say after serving up there, I thought that the first year, which is the year we're in right now, should only be the budget. Ooh. Only. Because part of the problem is, is this, but I mean, these people literally just got the, the, uh, the budget last week and now you're supposed to vote on a 200, it's a lot to digest from all these different departments. So what I would have liked to have seen was say- You spend would, a year doing the budget. And, like really and break mindful. down the sections of yep. the budget to- Because strangely- to the, to the different committees. So as a, I served on the labor committee, we would look at the budgets for um, the labor department and the Department of Employment Security, right? And then I guess weights and measures is under like, so you'd look at that, that committee would look at those things and parks, uh, fish and game would look at the, the parks budget and all these things as a preliminary so that you could have, it'd be like, we recommend to the finance department that we do this. And then you would have the finance committee that would take all these moving pieces and say, okay, we, yeah, this would work because of this. And you'd have ways and means in there. Well, you would also then, you know, to, to the point that Ian Underwood was trying to make in Croydon, uh, instead of it being sort of a, a extortive in the sense, if we had a budget, then you know how much money you have to spend. And then in the second year, yeah. assuming that's where then we bring do, the bills in, you you're do. like, well, 
well, do we have money for these magical things well, we I really, mean, you'd, really want? You'd still, have the, you'd still have the trailer bills because you'd still have to be able to enact it, but I think there'd be 400 reps participating more directly yep. in the areas of the budget that they're more familiar with. I also had a brilliant idea when I parked my car this morning. I was like, you know what we should do in America? Every 20 years, every state should vote whether they still want to be in the union or not. Everything. Everything because, should have no, a sunset. No, but think about it. Because that actually creates like an incentive to, to be like, to, keep, to, 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 to have a healthy system, yes. right? Yeah. Because then, you know, and people could do it on their own timelines. Yeah. Maybe they yeah. stagger it so it's not like this Everybody. massive thing, you know. <laughs> but I was like, oh, that would probably, like, solve some problems. I might even make it every 10 years. Yeah. And that way, you know, you kind of check in with your federal government and you're like, are you too big? Are you serving our purposes? Yeah. Are you just making all the insiders from Congress yeah. rich? Did you see these latest numbers? Yeah. They go in. They're making, like... A hundred and seventy-five oh, thousand dollars, and then in two, three years, they're worth like three hundred million dollars yeah, or thirty-six right. million dollars. I mean, it's so corrupt; it is just blatantly in front of us, and we shouldn't have to take it. So, another interesting t piece of that I'm going to watch the time is um, the, which I also don't disagree with, whether I like it or not. Um, the state adequacy numbers for education. There is a formula, there are numbers, that is what constitutes, because of the Claremont decisions, what an adequate education is. Um, they increase, and they probably should, because costs go up. So the base goes from um, about $3,560 to $4,700. So that's per student. Wow. Now, um, free or reduced lunch, they get an added, they used, they currently get an added $1,780. That goes up to $2,500. So that means that the districts that have the poorer communities and the poorer students who are more likely to need more, serve more, more, get a little bit more. Um, English language learner goes from about $700 to $800. So I'm like, okay. So $1,200 per student? For the meals? What was Not that to pay for the meals. Okay. It's an added, this is what's part of the budget. A, a part of the but adequacy. Per student? Per student. So you could, I'm back to my frying pan yep. plan, right? Even now that eggs cost like, you know, 10 bucks for yeah. a dozen, you could still give every student 12 eggs at the start no, of the week. No, this isn't about food, <laughs> but it's not about food at all. But I'm just saying, like, if you actually figure out the oh, numbers of things, so, none of it makes sense. So the, the, the kids that are English language learners, they, they currently, they, they don't get anything. Well, we'll come back to that. That goes from 700 to 800, and then special ed services, it goes from 1900 and change to 2100. So basically you've got 47, 57, 67, 72, 8, 10,011, 10,100 dollars is the, like the max that any one child, the, the cost. Now this is state funds that prim primarily go to the school district. Um, now what they did take out is the bonus money for the third graders who can't read. Because that's like a negative. <laughs> so we used to say, hey, if your third graders can't read, we'll give you extra money. Well, guess what that incentivizes. Oh, so I did think I was Perhaps like, that's why we have such a struggle now, with tying, the reading kiddos. Tying into that, um, HB2, as one of the amendments, expands who is eligible for education freedom accounts. It takes this um, current rate of 300% of poverty and makes it brings it up to 350% of poverty, which is what... The house has already passed. We should get rid of that in its well, entirety we, they because want to, every but. time that we do these little nuanced little things where you're trying to accommodate different groups, all that happens is that by its very nature makes government grow because now you've put these nuanced things in there and now people have to go pay attention to all the little things. It shouldn't be but related then it won't pass. to people. So then no kids will have school choice. So we have to decide do we But want now they're actually increasing the amount of money you need to have. No. Yes. That happens no matter what. The amount of money that goes, the adequacy funds is per student and it no, goes but to somebody. No, this 350% of poverty rate. Is, is who's eligible. Right, but it used to be 300. So they've actually made it, you have to be 
The you, richer, they're no, making you, the pool smaller. No, they're making it bigger. Are they? Yes. You used to only, ha you could only earn 300% of the poverty level to qualify. Now you can earn up to 350%. So instead of the family, uh -oh. so more families are eligible. Maybe I didn't, it is. More families okay. are eligible. Then in addition to that, there's all these things that this already passed the house as well. Um, allowing kids in foster care, kids who are in military, there's like a whole whole bunch of criteria that allow those children to be eligible for education freedom accounts as well because they, if you're bullied, if you're, or if there's a thing in here, if you, if your district is one of these schools that is way underperforming, your kid is now eligible for an EFA. So it is expanding the pool of children that would be eligible to take all those state dollars that go Instead to the district and go to a different school. Instead of creating special interests, just make a program, let the fault money follow the child, but, but and that'll let never everyone pass. do what they want. That won't pass. That won't pass. There's no, the numbers are not there to pass it. We have a, like a split house. It's not there. So yes, if we had another super majority Republican legislature, but then what would happen is the next year the Democrats would be in charge and they do away the, with the entire program. So the best way, in my opinion, is you do incrementally just uh, until everybody can finally that's what I think about buy it into <laughs> the concept that, ki that parents can make the decision and it isn't going to bankrupt the world and the schools aren't going to, you know, yes, schools, public schools will get smaller and that's okay. So, and if you don't want them to get smaller, make them better. Right. Um, interesting little sidebar on the state house. Um, Democrat rep from Enfield, his name's Josh Ajunkin, I think is how he says his name. He was like, um, he's the deputy majority floor leader for the Democrat party. He resigned the other day and I was like, mm, what happened? I wondered about yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I've heard, I, I know somebody who knows somebody and whatever. Apparently he was injured at work. Oh. And it, oh, that yeah, sucks. so uh, you know, parties aside, nobody want. I never want to hear a story where you know, especially a young, no, healthy like, person is you know and suffers again, an injury. Remember that remember the the energy we're putting in the world. Don't wish other people no. harm. I mean, which I was, again, back to COVID mania. Never wished um, other people harm, but a lot of people wished us harm. So yesterday at the um, city hall. Um, unanimous vote of the Board of Mayor and Aldermen with Joe Kelly Lavasser, um, Will Stewart and June Trishiani. Will Stewart and June Trishiani are both running for mayor. They unanimous, unanimously voted to give the mayor a 47% raise starting in the next term. Wow. That's a nice little vote. So that That's, means the mayor's salary, which it's in It's double what the inflation rate yep. was that we thought is acceptable um, for the state employees. The mayor's interested. salary is set in charter at six. So, so two of them are running for mayor. But they abstained. Oh, okay. But I mean, when your buddies are on, when your board, the board is filled with all your friends that are also in the same party as you, you know, you can abstain because the other 10, 11 of them are going to vote for you. Wow. So 68,000 shady, shady, shady is in the charter. And I had to go look up at the charter this morning and it does allow for the alderman to increase it. And I, which surprised me because when Ted Gatsis was mayor, they put it in funny how when Ted Gatsis was mayor, the alderman put it to the voters to decide and the voters said no um now that the democrats are in charge and it, they're they're figuring it's going to potentially be a democrat in the in the mayor's office two years from now that would benefit from this 47 percent. yeah it went from sixty-eight thousand to one hundred thousand. I mean, sixty-eight thousand no, seems okay with low that. anyway. It's I remember the salary. I thought it was seventy-two no. for some reason. I think they tried to raise it to seventy-two, but sixty-eight thousand. You know, I realize that's not a lot of money. I get that. However, the average salary or the median salary for somebody who lives in Manchester is only about forty-five thousand dollars. So, and while it's a full-time job, it's not a. It's a different kind of full-time job, and you get the benefits package, which is huge, and. If you don't want that 68, you know right up front what it is. It's $68,000. If you don't want to be mayor at $68,000, then don't run. So I thought it was interesting. Well, two people were like, I don't want to be mayor for $68,000. No, I'll, I'll do it for a hundred. Right. So I'll have my um, friends vote for the increase. Also in Manchester, uh, temporary 
Homeless shelters have closed, so expect to see more encampments around places. Um, there was another shooting yes last night on uh, like Valley and Bell Street. Um, a guy was shot to death there. Um, you know, it's just a person shot to death. No big deal. Um, there was a fire yesterday in a homeless encampment off Goffstown Road where the power lines are. Um, I mean, like, it was a big thing. Um, and from what Joe Lavasser says, um, the homeless director wants to build a facility for the homeless to use, kind of like a boys and girls club, but for the homeless. So that sounds tons and tons of fun. Um, and before we do run out of time, I do want to mention, so Brittany Ping and Victoria Sullivan started a local access TV show. They all, also, oh, sweet. it's called Right With Courage and they tape at 10 a.m. on Wednesday. So they taped earlier today. Oh, sweet. Um, so check out their show because they, they're, they're focusing on a different th type of thing. Um, I know Victoria, who decided not to run for mayor, is focusing on actual things that are changed could change the homeless and whatnot um she's been spending a lot of time on the ground and working with a lot of people and she said the reality is is there's a lot of people as we know who are financially making salaries to deal with the problem but well, there's no incentive there's... to actually solve the problem yep. and the the help is not actually being applied i mean there was a fire last week in the building I don't know if you saw it there. There's a little building on the railroad tracks, kind of like behind Market Basket and Firestone. I mean, I knew exactly where it was. It's right there in the open. There was a fire in that building last week. And I was like, how is it that outreach people don't see that right in front of, it's right under your nose. It's one thing if they're up in the woods and- Here's the reality. Everyone sees the problems and no one wants to do no. the hard work And that's work what Victoria and Brittany are trying it. to work with people to- Because you know what? When you actually have to solve problems, you're gonna make people yeah. unhappy. Happy. Someone's well, going to be EO'd. And, and we've got a lot of people making, you know, fairly large salaries and a lot of nonprofits that get federal grants and all these different grants. And a, a lot of them don't seem to, you know, uh, Victoria did say she went to uh, the, the homeless, the temporary shelter that closed. And she went there with her son because her son got suspended from school and that was his punishment to have to serve lunch or whatever, something. But she said they walked in. She goes, and the workers were in the back of the room on the computer looking away, you know, facing away. And she goes, and we're there the whole time and nobody's interacting with any of these homeless people. And she thought, I don't know, they're all right here in the building. Isn't this where you would want to do, do things? Stuff, yeah. So, I don't know. Anyway, so I actually think, oh, that's interesting. I did not know about Victoria. Yeah. So um, that, that'll that be fun. That'll be interesting. I yeah. mean, I actually think that we could expend more time and energy actually trying to concretely yeah. fix some of these problems. Yeah. Um, and, you know, candidly, it's a lot easier to be a gadfly than it is to oh, I actually know. run Trust me. stuff. I, so I, I, I've tried. All the haters. I'm going into gadfly mode. It's just easier sometimes. Anyways, that's all we have time for this week. Um, weather is coming up next week. It's going to be in the 60s most day, I think, by next week, and it's 70 degrees. So ignore the cold weather today. It'll get better. <laughs> um, that's all we got. We'll be back next week. See, See you, you guys. Take care. Bye.